Hi guys, welcome to part 4. Last time I finished the water loop, so now I'm gonna hook up some electronics and test it. First of all, I'm gonna make the Arduino electronics a little more organized, as currently it's a mess. Then I'm going to add a 5 inch Nextion touchscreen display as an interface to the Arduino and then do the code and HMI setup off screen or this video would never end and just briefly show you how the code works. Cue the time lapse. So this is probably the time where I can say what things will be going to and from the Arduino. The Nextion display is connected to TX and RX over one of the serial ports from the Arduino Mega a LM35 sensor for measuring the ambient temperature, just cause I had one, a digital temperature probe that I mounted in the bottom of one of the reservoirs, which is connected to a digital input, a flow sensor right behind the pump for measuring the water flow, some digital outputs for controlling the 8 relay board for various things that I'll come back to later, and some digital pins for communicating with the Pokies 56U that Mac 3 controls. By the way guys, thanks for subscribing! We've tripled if not quadrupled over the last two months, so that's pretty awesome. We really appreciate the comments and support so far. We will try to make videos worth your time. And also, if you have any questions or you want to know more about something, please write it down in the comments. We will answer them best to our knowledge, or maybe even include a better explanation in the next couple of videos. Thanks! And other stuff like PVM signals to control the fan speeds and laser power level. Alright, so this is starting to look like something. I've used all the blue, green and yellow for the IOs and conserved the red and black for positive and negative. And the only thing now is to hook up the logic level converter. My plan is to desolder the ground and VCC A pins and solder on some cables in order to plug in directly to the Arduino here. The bidirectional logic level converter is needed due to the Arduino operating at 5V logic and the Pokies 56U at 3.3V logic. A pretty nice gadget to have around. And now it looks pretty organized. I've still got this place free over here, maybe for some future expansion. And I really like these industrial cable channels for hiding all the wires and these DIN rails for these terminals that I got from work. As some of the sensors need 5 volt in ground, I made this extra board just to distribute it a little better, with some plugs on it. And as an extra, I added this buzzer, and when the machine starts, it makes 3 small sounds, and when it stops, it makes a long sound for like a 3 seconds. Now to the Arduino code. As the Arduino runs the code as a loop, I've structured the code a little bit like programming a PLC. First, by reading all the inputs, then running the code, and finally writing all the outputs. So even though you try writing a variable that turns an LED on or off multiple times in the loop, it will only write the variable's last state to the output by the end of the loop. Now quickly from the top, I've got some basic libraries added, especially the Nexion library for the display, the one wire for communication with the water temperature probe, and the Dallas temperature library for the LM35 ambient temperature sensor. As I tend to forget the layout of things after a couple of months, I've tried to describe the overall pins and colors of the various sensors so when in the future I want to add stuff, I should be able to do that fairly quickly without ruining the functionality too much. Then I've got my outputs and inputs defined, and all the initialization code for the pin modes, and reading the inputs and writing the outputs functionality. Then the declaration of all global variables and objects needed throughout the code, and here's the Nextion display objects defined and handled in the object list that listens for any events made by the display. And of course, all the callback functions for the buttons and sliders on the screen. Then I have the laser control safety when in startup that I need to activate it, and when in manual I can change the power level. And of course, when in automatic mode, I wait to enable the trigger when the Mach 3 software sends the M4 command from the G-code. Then I've got the laser bed control for disabling and enabling the four steppers, but I've not wired those in and I won't be using that anyways in the future. Flow control handling for counting pulses with an interrupt pin so I can calculate the flow of water in the system. The fan control for cooling the water, so when in automatic mode I map the temperature to the PVM output 
17 degrees meaning fans are at the lowest speed and going upwards to 30 degrees Celsius where the fans will be at the maximum speed. But I tend to set it to manual at a fixed speed during the different times of the year. Then I've got the manual mode laser triggering handling to be able to fire the laser for a certain amount of time which I've used to find the tube's maximum efficiency. Also a function for updating the graph on the screen with the water and ambient temperatures as well as the water flow and fan speeds. Then I've got a get temperature function that basically gets the temperature from the room and water that then converts it. And finally the buzzer functions just as an extra add-on to be able to hear when it starts and stops. And we come to the setup. So pretty much I initialize the next gen. I initialize the pins, I initialize the flow control. Sensors begin is pretty much the digital temperature probe. I begin the serial. I attach a callback for each of the buttons on the display. And I set up some timers. So here's the loop. Pretty neat and structured. I read all the inputs. I update all the timers. I listen to the Nexion object list. I run the fan control, flow control, bed control, laser control, and finally write the outputs. And this code is pretty much without any delays whatsoever, because I don't like those. So that was it. The Nexion editor program that IT had offer is pretty simple. Although you have to be very structured when making all your objects, as the Arduino code needs the page ID on which page the object is, the ID of the object itself, which is incremented automatically every time you add an object, and the object's exact name. As I didn't really know what I wanted from the start, I just tested and tried some things out, which is okay. But when deleting an object, all objects created after that would shift their IDs. So there was a lot of times where previous functioning things would stop working and tedious work of finding the issue was quite time consuming. But after some time I got the hang of it and always double checked all IDs before compiling the HMI to the SD card and loaded the screen with the new version. Now this was over 6 months ago so the current version might be a lot better at handling some of the stuff. All in all, a great software. Early on in the build I covered the machine with some plastic plates that I had lying around and lots of tape to ensure that the smoke was going outside of the shop. So one day I got tired of watching it looking like a dumpster, so I cut some 3mm MDF plates to size and glued some black vinyl on the sides. Just to make it a little less woody, I guess. And I didn't know where to put the display other than just taping it to the machine any way possible, as you can see here. So later on I decided to laser cut the front part of the machine, as I wanted a space for the display, so this was what I came up with, which up till now is what I've got. And I made the display enclosure a bit angled in order to see it a bit better. Ok, so now to a quick water cooling demonstration. I've done some time lapse of the screen when cutting to see the water temperature rising and falling, but as mentioned before, I usually just set the fan speeds manually cause the variation in room temperature has such a big difference. During the winter the ambient temperature is maybe around 10 to 15 degrees Celsius. And at that time I only need to run the fan speeds at around 10% to keep the laser well below 20 degrees. But at the moment with the room temperature around 21 degrees I basically run the fans at maximum while cutting and that can hold the water temperature right around the 23 degree mark. Which still is very acceptable. I don't cut when the water is below 15 and I don't want it above 25 degrees Celsius. In the winter times when the water is below 15 degrees Celsius I turn on the machine well before cutting with the fans off. Then wait till the pump has warmed the water above 15 degrees before cutting. And when extremely cold I have used a small heater fan to blow warm air towards the reservoirs. And in combination with engraving something at 10% power level just to heat the water a bit before cutting at maximum power. Just to keep the temperature differences to a minimum. So the water cooling works. I know I could improve a lot just by having more water in the system, but that I'll think about when doing the next big upgrade. Also in part 2 I forgot to mention that these linear rails that I bought weren't needed as the 4 lead screws were more than stable enough. 
But you know, I just ordered them to be safe and I can always use these for something. In part 3, I didn't really mention that the last parts I added in the end of the video were these T fittings. So instead of only having water running back into this reservoir, whereas this one wouldn't be used as much, I added this T fitting and here as well. Up here is the refill. So some of the water getting back from the laser tube goes into here and into this guy. It's not a perfect 50-50 ratio, it's more like 25-75 ratio, but it's good enough. Now I know that this reservoir also is going to get used. Remember that high-pitched sound the steppers made in part 2? Well, that happens when you run four steppers on one driver. So I came up with this elaborate idea to use a relay board to break the connection when the steppers hit their own individual limit switches. And when all limit switches were on, I would tell the controller that the laser bed axis had hit its own limit switch. So basically, the Arduino would just be translating four limit switches into one. And by this way, I could home the axis without stalling each stepper because I would turn them off as they hit their own limit switches. Because then I could use the touchscreen to turn on all relays, breaking the connection to the steppers and thereby eliminating that very annoying high pitch sound. But I've scratched that idea, as the primary reason for that solution was actually just to remove that sound. So instead, I've bought four TB6600 stepper drivers. So I can drive each stepper individually and thus eliminating the sound and just keeping it enabled at all times anyway. No need for buttons and unnecessary features and writing code to make it all work. And I'm also going to run the bed without limit switches. I'm just going to keep doing this manually by driving them all the way down until all four steppers stall. And that will automatically be leveled mechanically. It's not perfect, but it will do, as I usually don't do this very often. Some safety is also in order, so I added this emergency stop that shuts down all axes and shuts down the laser. And I used this relay board to daisy chain the water pump failure signal from the power supply through multiple relays. That means I need to turn on a certain amount of relays every time in order for the laser to fire. And the first relay is always off as when the Arduino starts up, I need to actively press the activate button from the touchscreen to enable that relay. And I also use this function to deactivate it just as a precaution every time I finish a job. When in automatic mode, the laser is only enabled when Mach 3 turns on the spindle with the M4 command and deactivates again with the M5 command from the G-code. Long story short, I added this safety as early on I finished cutting something and I reset the axis causing the laser to fire. And I left the machine unattended for like 40 minutes. I was only sitting maybe 10 feet away from it designing something but I didn't notice that the laser was burning as I left the exhaust on. So when I got back to the machine I noticed the laser was on and I turned it off right away and it had burned a big hole through the 18 millimeter thick MDF plate in the bottom. That's 17 centimeters away from the nozzle. And underneath, luckily, it just passed the AC voltage inputs from the laser's power supply. So, safety is very important. All right, so now you're wondering, why would the laser turn on just by resetting the axis? Well, I'm using my laser cutter as a CNC machine. So in order for me to turn on and off the laser, I used the Z-axis direction pin. That means every time the CNC machine would be cutting down into the material, I turn on the laser and every time it moves up, I turn it off. And when you reset the steppers, it can cause the direction pin to either fly to one or the other direction. And that I learned from the hard way. So, all right guys, I think I'm gonna end it here. Next time I'm gonna do a more of a future plans and pros and cons video. What I like, what I don't like of the laser, what I would want to redo and so on. So stay tuned for that. For this one, if you have any questions or suggestions, then please leave it down in the comment section below and I will definitely answer them as good to my knowledge as possible or even just include it in the next video. Until next time, bye.